We are in module 11, which is addition and subtraction of rational expressions, which in other words, today, we are adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, we have to go back to basics to understand how to add and subtract. So, so before we work with fractions, let's talk about concepts. If I had an apple and an orange and I asked you to add them together, could you? No, you couldn't because an apple plus an orange would always be an apple plus an orange. Those two items are not alike, therefore we can't add them together. But if I had an apple and you had an apple and I asked you to add them together, could you do it? Sure you could. My apple plus your apple would be two apples. So when we add today, you have to go back to basics. To add and subtract, you must have like terms. We've already seen in chapter 12 that we can add letters that are alike. 1x plus 1x is 2x. If I asked you to add an x plus a y, could you do it? No, they're not the same. So what we have to find out today is what makes fractions alike in order to add them. So let's look at our class notes. I have the fractions here, 1 fourth plus 3 fourths, and I want you to add them. Well, in order to add them, we have to decide, are these like terms? Are these like fractions? The only way to do this is to actually physically go back to elementary school and draw a picture. So let's go to the board. What does 1 fourth mean? It means you would take a whole item. So I'm going to draw a whole circle. And 1 fourth means I'm dividing it into four equal parts. So like cutting a cake into four equal parts. And 1 out of 4 means I have one part of 4. What does 3 fourths mean? Well, it means the same thing. I'm starting with a hole. So I'm going to draw another whole circle. The divide by 4 means to cut it into four equal parts. But now you have 3 fourths. You have 3 parts out of 4. So what I'm physically asking you to do is take this slice that's 1 fourth and this slice that's 3 fourths and add them up. Can you add them? Sure you can. And the reason why is because they look exactly alike. They have the same size piece. So we now have learned what makes fractions alike. It is the denominators. This says we're dividing both our holes into four equal parts. And if we divide them into four equal parts, they'll be the same size. So then what are we really adding? What we're really adding is this one-fourth to these three-fourths. And when we add it up, look how many parts we have now. Your one plus my three means we have now four-fourths. We added the parts, one plus three, we didn't change the size of these pieces, they stayed fourths. So the rule is, when you add fractions, you do not add the denominators that make that eight, because you're not changing the size of the slice. So here's a little way to remember this. Adding fractions, easy as can be, all you need is an LCD. If you remember from third grade, LCD stands for least or lowest common denominator. You must have the same denominator in order to even start adding the fractions because they have to be the same size piece. If the denominators are the same, you just write the bottom. What's the denominator? Four. You collect, which means to add, the tops, the numerators. What's one plus three? Four. When you get here to one fraction, then your job is to divide or reduce the fraction. And we all can look at this picture. Four over four really makes one whole circle because 4 divided by 4 is the number 1. So the rule is, adding fractions easy as can be, all you need is an LCD. Got it. Write the bottom, collect the top, then reduce the fraction, then you stop. So that's your order on adding fractions. So knowing that, let's look at our class notes and look at some algebra fractions. So here's my first algebraic fraction. I have 5x over 12 plus x over 12. 
everything in this chapter is going to look alike. So you have to pay attention to the operation that connects the fractions. So I'm asking you to add. Okay, I'm not asking you to multiply today or divide. There's an addition symbol between those fractions. So the song goes, adding fractions, easy as can be, all you need is an LCD. That's telling you when I say add, make sure you have the same denominator. What makes fractions alike is their denominator. And in order to add, you need like terms. So yes, we have the same denominator. So the song says, the rule says, write the bottom, collect the top. Now, here's where we're using everything we've learned from chapter 12. 5x plus 1x is how many? That's 6x. Write the bottom, collect the top. Now this bar means to do division, so we're going to reduce, divide. To divide, you have to be connected by multiplication. This is multiplication. They're side by side, so we can divide. We can divide 6 and 12. How many 6s go into 12? 2. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. 6 goes into 12 twice. We discuss where the bigger number is is where the answer goes. How do we write our final answer? Well, in the numerator, we have 1x over 2. But that's not acceptable because in algebra, we don't have to write the coefficient of 1. So we can write x over 2. But wait a minute. If that's connected by division, we can also write it as multiplication. Another way to write this same answer is there's a 1 in front of here. This will be 1 over 2, which is 1 half with the x in the middle. Think about that. If the x is in the middle, it floats to the top. And that will give you the x over 2. So either one of these expressions are correct. They mean the same thing. But to add, if you look, rules are totally different. We didn't do any factoring. We didn't do any multiplying. All we did was write the bottom, the denominator. We added the tops. And we got it to be one fraction. Then we're going to reduce. OK, let's go to our notes and look at another algebraic fraction. Let's look at example four in our class notes. Again, I know it looks crazy because it's all these letters, variables, just take it piece by piece. You have two fractions. You have x squared plus 4x over 3x plus 6 plus 2 minus x over 3x plus 6. Again, look in between the fractions and see what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to do addition. So the rule is, adding fractions, easy as can be, all you need is an LCD. That's the first thing you check for. Do we have the same denominator? Yes, we do. So the rule says, you write the bottom first. What's going to stay in the denominator? The 3x plus 6. You collect the top. You do not factor, you collect. Collect means to add. To add, we need like terms. So I have an x squared. Do I have any other x squareds? No. I have a 4x. Well, who can I collect with 4x? Negative 1x. 4x minus 1x is 3x. Then I have a constant, and it's a positive 2. So yes, you still have to use your rules of putting together things that terms that are alike. You still have to put everything in descending order. Now, you write the bottom. You put together the tops. Now the bar means to do what operation? Division. Well, wait a minute. We've been discussing all week. You cannot do division unless you're connected by multiplication. This is not connected by multiplication. This is not connected by multiplication. You can't divide until you do what first? Factor. That's why you learned chapter 13 how to factor, to make multiplication. What rule of factoring is this? Well, it's not GCF. It's not a difference of perfect squares. It has how many terms? Three. It's the trinomial rule. So you put two parentheses, and you start. What can multiply to x squared? x times x. What can multiply to 2? Well, that's easy. It's 1, one and 2. Will 1 and 2 add to 3? Sure will. Adding means the symbols have to be the same. We're adding to a positive. They're both positive. Now we're going to factor the denominator. What's the first rule of factoring? GCF. What do these terms have in common we can divide them by? It's a 3. So we're going to take out a 3, and you're going to tell me what's left. 
3x divided by 3 is x. Positive 6 divided by 3 is positive 2. So this is why you had to learn to factor. Because once you get it down to one fraction, one fraction always has to be reduced, which is lowest terms. Now we have something that's alike that's going to divide. You could put the ones there because something divided by itself is 1. And look what we have left. x plus 1 times 1 is x plus 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And there's your answer. You just added two algebraic fractions and got your answer in lowest terms. Now, what operation goes hand in hand with addition? That's right, subtraction. So not only are we going to add fractions today, we're going to subtract fractions. But we again got to go back to basics. Do we understand what subtraction means? There's a huge difference between asking a kid to do 5 minus 3 and 5 minus negative 3. And it goes back to arithmetic and the number line. That means I'm starting at 5. This says subtract 3. Subtract means to kindergartners and first graders to move in what direction? To the left. This is subtracting a positive 3. So if I'm at 5 and I go back 3, which I can do, I would be at 2. But if you ask a student to do this example, 5 minus negative 3, again, look what happens. Yes, they would still start at 5. Subtract means to go to the left still, but now that 3 is negative. Can you go to the left negative 3 spots? You can't. So that's why we learn what is the definition of subtract. Subtract means to add the opposite. And the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Well, now a student understands that. Start at 5. Add means go to the right. Go to the right positive 3 places. And that would put you at 8. So we have to go back to basics. When we're doing subtraction, we talked about this in chapter 12, any term behind a subtraction symbol will change signs. That's what subtract means to do, change the signs. It means to add the opposite. And we learned the correct word for that was additive inverse. So today, we're going to be dealing with fractions. And we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to change the signs or add the opposite. So let's go to our class notes, and let's look at example 5. We have 2x squared minus 7 over x minus 2 minus x squared minus 3 over x minus 2. So if you look, it says to subtract. Subtract means to add the opposite. Subtract means to change signs. But whose signs do you change? We've been discussing all semester. This subtract symbol floats to the top. So we're only going to change who's in the numerator. So the first fraction will stay the way it is. What we will do is we will change subtraction to addition, and we will make everything behind it the opposite. So when that subtraction symbol floats to the top, it changes both the x squared and the negative 3. You make everything its opposite. What is the opposite of x squared? Negative x squared. What is the opposite of negative 3? Positive 3. We're not going to change the denominator because this negative floats where? To just the top. So only the numerator gets changed. The denominator stays the same. You can think of this as distributing a negative 1. That's a negative 1 in front of that fraction. And we did that in chapter 12. When there's a negative 1 in front, we change all the signs. Now that we change the signs, we're back to adding fractions, easy as can be. All we need is LCD. We got it. So we write the bottom, we collect the top. 2x squared and a negative 1x squared can be put together to make x squared. Negative 7 plus 3, those constants can be put together and that makes a negative 4. So we write the bottom, we collect the top. Now we're ready to reduce, do division. But wait a minute. To do division, you have to be connected by, that's right, multiplication. So now we're going to use our factoring skills. How do we factor x squared minus 4? Is there a GCF? No. Is the difference of perfect squares? Yes. So we put two parentheses. 
Remember, perfect square means something times itself. What times itself is x squared? x. What times itself is 4? 2. What are the signs? If you want a negative, they're one of each. Positive times a negative is a negative. Now, can you factor the denominator? There is no GCF. It is not a difference of perfect squares because 2 is not a perfect square and x is not a perfect square. It's not a trinomial. So that's in lowest terms. But we're going to keep it in parentheses because those two pieces are stuck together. They're not connected by multiplication. You can't separate them. If you look, you have now something that's alike. x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 divides that and makes 1. So if you look, in the numerator you have x plus 2 times 1, which is x plus 2. In the denominator you have a 1. Do you have to write a denominator of 1? Well, think about arithmetic. If I had 5 over 1, what would the answer be? It would be 5. So remember, in algebra we don't write a denominator of 1. So that answer is x plus 2. So we just subtracted two algebraic fractions and got our result. So don't get scared. Think of your basic rules from elementary school and follow through. Thank you.